After learning that Florida is not all it is cracked up to be, some Americans who had relocated there during the outbreak appear to be losing interest in the Sunshine State. With 250 days of sunshine a year on average, it's little wonder the state is so alluring, especially to people from northern climates where the cold and clouds reign. However, some people are giving up on the idea after visiting the South for a while. And those who are packing their bags don't take long to make a long list of reasons why they've had enough. While many of the people who participated in the nationwide exodus south have developed a deep affection for the state, others have had enough of the intense heat, frequent hurricanes, threatening native species like alligators and crocodiles, and growing expense of living. During the pandemic, Florida saw a population boom with over 700,000 new residents relocating there in 2022. Based on census data, New York was the state with the largest number of transplants, with 90,000 people moving from the Empire State to Florida in 2022. As of July 2023, Florida was still the state with the fastest rate of growth, according to Census Bureau data. However, as more individuals make U-turns in their U-Haul trucks, this number may soon drop sharply. Nevertheless, about 500,000 people departed Florida in 2022, despite the state drawing hundreds of thousands of newcomers in 2022 with the allure of beautiful weather, no income tax, and reduced expenses overall. A few of the people who left cite rising insurance premiums, an unfriendly political climate, increased traffic, and inclement weather. Consumer prices in South Florida increased by over 5% year-over-year in terms of cost of living, while nationwide prices increased by 3.2%. The housing market in Florida was offering properties at deeply discounted rates just a few years ago, but since 2020, prices have increased by 60%. Zillow reports the average property price to be $388,500. This is only somewhat more than the $384,000 median home price in the United States. However, when it comes to purchasing insurance for a roof over your head, home insurance increased by 42% in 2023 to almost $6,000 annually. This increase was caused by the state's extreme weather, which included several hurricanes and the ensuing flooding. In terms of auto insurance, Florida has rates that are drastically 50% greater than the U.S. average. With Florida's median pay being among the lowest in the nation, there's nothing to write home about in terms of work. The state's unemployment rate, which is 3.1%, is significantly lower than the 3.9% national average. However, the state also has among the lowest earnings. The politics of Florida are particularly peculiar as the state has alternated between the Democratic and Republican parties multiple times since 1992, when it supported George H. W. Bush. The state flipped red for both of George W. Bush's tenure after turning blue and electing Bill Clinton in 1996. The state turned blue again after Barack Obama was elected in 2008, and it did so again until Trump took office in 2016. In 2020, Trump held on to Florida even though he lost the election as a whole. Thanks to its divisive governor, Ron DeSantis, the state has now implemented some very conservative policies. These include a ban on abortions after six weeks, restrictions on transgender care for minors, state interventions in the teaching of race, slavery, and sexuality in schools, and a crackdown on undocumented immigrants. Louis Rotkowitz, a transplant from New York, lived in Florida for two years before returning north and relocating to North Carolina. This is where you want to go, just like any decent New Yorker would. It's an outright falsehood. Rotkowitz sought a more refined way of living but could not quite fit in. He immediately lost interest in the area after accepting a position as a primary care physician while his wife started her teaching career because it would take him more than an hour to get to and from work every day. His homeowners association dues then doubled, effectively shattering any Florida hope he may have harbored. Even though I made a high wage, we were having financial difficulties. Our quality of life was zero, Rotkowitz remarked. 
A new regulation that goes into effect in 2023 that permits anyone to carry a concealed handgun without a permit also made Rockowitz uneasy. Everyone is carrying a gun there, he remarked. I think of myself as a conservative guy, but there should be some kind of process and license requirements if you want to carry a gun. Barb Carter is among those who concluded that moving from Kansas to Orlando, Florida was not the right decision for her. It was a mix of all three, not just the $9,000 in damages from an armadillo infestation in her house, the destruction caused by Hurricane Ian, which later blew off her roof, or the anxiety she experienced while looking for a doctor to remove a tumor from her liver. Carter left behind her own grandchildren and children, with whom she had expressly moved to be closer, after selling her house at a $40,000 loss. That is a common question. Why would you move back to Kansas? Carter told NBC News. I tell them all the same thing. You have to take off your vacation goggles. I thought it was really deceptively advertised. I used to think, you know, this isn't all you guys have cracked this up to be at all. But I was living there. Carter was informed upon moving to the state that her rent would actually be $750 before it increased to $875. Originally, her rent was scheduled to be $580 per month. Carter, a Republican who calls herself a middle of the road, adds that it was too simple to upset someone due to the nature of politics in the area. It is absurd that you can have a conversation there without politics coming up. Carter clarified, We're retired. We should be enjoying our best years of life. I watched friends in my own neighborhood break up over it so I quickly learned to just keep my mouth quiet. I dislike losing friends, particularly when it's because of politics. She thinks that the cottage-style apartment she is paying $520 for in Kansas now would have cost her at least $1,500 in Orlando. Many refer to me as the Dorothy of today. She chuckled. There's no place like home. One of the reasons Donna Smith, 61, wanted to move to Pennsylvania was the intense political climate. It really breaks my heart because Florida was a really great place when I moved there, Smith remarked. There was a sort of beachy, live and let live vibe when I first moved to Florida. Everyone you met was laid back and you met individuals from all over. It's shocking that it's just gone now. It's simply gone, replaced by an unceasingly tense environment. I don't mean to incite dread but I get the feeling that it could blow at any time. Smith clarified. It's just the vibe, the feeling there. Every time you walk into a room, you hear people talking to complete strangers about how great Trump is or how they attended the last rally, whether they are waiting for your car or something else. It is simply everywhere. Jody Cummings of Connecticut, who relocated to Florida in 2021, holds a similar opinion. Cummings told NBC. It wasn't the utopia on any level that I thought it would be. I assumed that living in Florida would be simpler, with a slightly slower pace and higher temperatures. I had no idea that nighttime temperatures would be that high. It was expensive, very expensive, and it was quite hard to make friends. Cummings claims that although if the state does not impose income tax, the high expenses of food, rent, and auto insurance practically negate any savings. She relocated back north after enduring nonstop traffic and extreme heat for six months. I had rapidly lost all interest in Florida. After moving there and finding it wasn't what I had anticipated, I was filled with confusion and guilt about wanting to leave.